uh, takes um, in, in our web APIs we have um, some extensions of the uh, environment where we can add some description, web API description, we will see it in a while. And based on that information, the Open API writer can generate an Open API document, which is essentially a tree. So, here's an example. Uh, we have a method implemented in our web API, and um, thanks to that pragma there, web Web API, there is this tab available where we can enter the description. This is a JSON uh, <coughs> description of uh, what the Web API, this, this entry point does, right? So based on that information, we can generate the uh, Open API documentation, which is this for those of you who know it. Um, sorry. HTML. Well, um, for for rendering, I mean, for the, the part of the HTML, uh, we we already had some support for HTML. That we extended it in this way. I mean, we we already have this this uh, hierarchy of HTML elements. But then we go, um, we went with uh, an HTML builder, which is essentially a facility for writing stuff more in the, I guess, seaside way of writing code. Here we have an HTML uh, builder with this kind of code uh, implemented, right? And this generates an HTML document. This is how we see an HTML document there. So support for HTML, and then at some point in time we decided to adopt this uh, framework, Angular JS, for uh, all the uh, behavior of our uh, client. Because we 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 were focused on implementing a server, right? But then we wanted to test our server, so we implemented a basic client. So uh, for that we adopted uh, Angular JS. And of course, any small talker does, we reify the concepts there. They're, this is kind of complex. But, um, here you, you will see um, uh, how the code looks like. I mean, this, this is, again, another extension to the, to the system in which by entering here the pragma JS, we can write or JavaScript inside a method, right? And in fact, this uh, was, I guess, the second of the third uh, extensions. So uh, at that time, we decided to um, to make the uh, support for external any any foreign language uh, in 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 B is is uh, implemented in this way, provided that we count with a parser, so we can generate an AST for any language, let's say X, we can just register the uh, language X in our compiler, so then we can have something like this, right? Uh, of course, besides the uh, parts that we uh, might have uh, a pretty printer like in this case, so we can see it in that way. And this prevent, prevented us from many typos, right? Because if we deal with strings, we are dealing with strings. <laughs> so, <clears throat> so here is the result. I mean, that, uh, those classes, the controller, which is an artifact of uh, Angular JS, are a bunch of uh, JavaScript functions. So here is the the, uh, the, uh, the code of the controller. It is of, um, uh, returned by the server, right? So. JavaScript support. Uh, for testing purposes, this is simple, but uh, it looks interesting to me. Because uh, we have a um, HTTP client uh, implemented on top of some Windows library, but um, 
for testing purposes, there is no reason to, uh, or for some tests, some tests, there is no reason to uh, wait for all the uh, round trip of um, requests, right? So this this guy talks directly to the uh, HTTP server. So this works much in the same way as a real uh, HTTP client. Here, uh, again, there is a server running on, on, on that URL. We create a direct client and then just send a request and get the response without uh, all the round trip of uh, HTTP stack. Blah, blah, blah. What else? Uh, well, foreign languages, I mentioned this. Uh, we have here, um, we name it uh, hybrid compiler. Uh, this guy is the guy that has the register of the foreign languages. So uh, we have um, this, this and I guess two or two or three more, right? Mm -hmm. for, for other purposes, but we have um, foreign languages support in the. So, uh, this is the same JavaScript code. This is HTML. Um, I showed before the, the uh, way of, the system way, so to speak, of writing HTML, but there is a way of just entering directly this fragment here and compiling this as a method. Yeah? And this is the FOIA method, by the way. And CCS, right? So what else? Well, this is um, um, the way Microsoft or Windows um, suggest that we should go. I mean, this is a, a, a architecture for splitting the uh, all the effort in many processes. So these are like uh, the, uh, Windows uh, proposal on, on doing that. I mean, having a an HTTP request queue with some workers, which are in fact OS processes, and all the uh, underlying uh, management of the um, queuing and, and, and uh, fetching requests is done by, by the library. So we implemented all these to support this Windows um, feature, right? And here is another uh, task that, uh, well, exercises is this stuff. It's perhaps not so interesting. So, well, um, more or less, the, those were the, uh, the main uh, points. Uh, so we ended up with the, um, our first uh, version of the uh, PetroVR server, which is this, where we have, well, this is not PetroVR stuff, but we have their um, kind of a tree of uh, cases of projects on uh, high low cases and then we can run the simulation and each case in fact a bunch of inputs for the uh, for the project so here we can enter some values and then run the simulation and then get results back so we have here a uh, tree of the results with uh, charts and, and all the Visualization stuff. I mean, this is uh, high charts. Uh, um, going to do using high charts. And, and the user interface is Angular. Yes. Yes. So here we have some uh, stochastic uh, visualizations. So, well, we were happy. We're still working on that. So at some point in time, I decided to test um, how. What was the state of our framework for developing uh, web applications? So I decided to to do this to expose uh, the browsers of B, I mean the, the tools that we use daily uh, in a web browser. So why not? And I did it because where I thought about doing that because we counted with the with models of this. I mean, let me show you. This is, I don't know, perhaps the form is too big. Yes. Well, the form is too big. Uh, <laughs> but this is a browser, right? This is uh, a more or less 
the uh, classical person. So I mean, it's too long. This is <laughs> okay. Yeah, yes, uh, yes. But no, I, I will jump directly to the um, the web. Well, this is um, uh, some, so to speak, security, even though it is in my local machine. So, <coughs> if it works, there you have this is uh, <coughs> well, this is um, our uh, browser, but from the web, right? And we are we have all of, of, of um, reflection. We have, so we have, for instance, here the methods. Uh, I used for this uh, some stuff uh, named called mirror, right? So we have, uh, I don't know if you, it's probably, well, some pretty pinned and, and parsing out small code. So we have, uh, for instance, uh, well, the uh, class definition, the class comment, the bytecodes, even the, uh, even the disassembly code here. So, uh, available from the web. And I implemented also uh, implementers, sender stuff. I mean, I here have the uh, um, implementers of this method. Uh, what else? Senders. This is our usual stuff. And why not uh, saving methods or classes? So, for instance, if I go here and enter HTML render, I look for this class and go to the, the, the class implementing this view, which is this one, uh, class browser HTML renderer, I can change it. So, for instance, if I change here, the back color of this window, it's uh, the code which is loaded right on using this page. So if I put here, for instance, color um, dark, I don't like it. <laughs> so I have here, and of course I can, I should reload the page because I am just uh, editing the, the code in the server. So what else? Uh, I can inspect, so for instance, if I create, I have my petroleum image available here, so I can do something like wall completion new and inspect it. This is just a toy, but it works, right? And I have here a new instance of wall completion, and most interesting part for me is this. We have here our debugger, right? And it's alive. We can all. Oh. That's ah. There was a typo here. Yeah. Yeah. So it's working, right? So I can divide here, see the uh, frame, the stack frames, right? So here the receiver is four, and um, sorry, the receiver is three, the receiver is four, and I have here you know, this, this. Well, the divider is also lead and, and uh, is usable from, from, from here. So, I will back to the presentation if I can. So, well, this is what I did, and then we started to think about the uh, possible interesting usage of this stuff because we now uh, might have a, a, a browser um, or a debugger of a remote server or a remote server. So, <clears throat> all the other the other interesting idea is to have some sort of uh, 
uh, well, collaborative uh, environment in which many developers work on, on, work on the same image. So, um, sum up. Well, I have, I think I had here some statistics on, on metrics on the effort here. Be represented. Uh, in, I mean, uh, there is three classes per browser or per tool. One for the controller, uh, which is our web API, and to one for the view, which is the HTML view, and the other one is for the uh, JavaScript behavior of the page. So, and here are the uh, the amounts of methods per per class. So, so it was, I think. Uh, uh, to back uh, for for our framework, and um, this is more stuff in which we are working on. There are many um, topics that are not here. For instance, web sockets, something that we are working on. But security is one of them because if you are opening a, a, a small browser, you know, web browser, perhaps there are some security um, things to think about. <laughs> Um, persistency, well, deployment is a big area in which we have to work a lot, learn a lot, and, well, we are, we are all this piece, by the way. I am <laughs> distributed architecture, Angular instead of AngularJS, because AngularJS is kind of old and perhaps too complex. Uh, so that's it. And um, I think I have here a URL of um, where B is going to be, but the <laughs> thing is that uh, we are, since I would say a month or two, experiencing some uh, technical problems in releasing this, but the thing is that it's going to be there. <laughs> but the other thing I, I wanted to say is that uh, those browsers, uh, those, those tools, um, there might be a way of uh, sharing B while we have the uh, uh, native Windows stuff working, which uh, I guess it will be ready soon, but in, in, in the meantime we, we can release or just host a um, um, web V version so anybody can enter and play a little bit with the V small. So that's it. If you have uh, questions, you get it. Thank you. decided to go directly to implement web sockets on top of sockets. So we had to create our own version of a HTTP client and an HTTP server instead of using the ones that we were using because the underlying socket in those libraries is hidden. I mean we can not access to the underlying socket. So we had to implement our HTTP stack. So, so that, that's in, in the direction of uh, implementing all the, all the thing instead of using uh, uh, Windows to support that. Uh, for the moment, these uh, Windows are uh, small, right? But of course, we are thinking about uh, 
some other possibilities, perhaps lightness. So, and in fact, uh, if these web browsers, I mean, the web browsers are um, in production, so to speak, uh, we can have a kernel running on Linux so, and accessing, I mean, because the, the, the huge amount of work is on the uh, UI, right? When we move, for instance, to Linux, it's kind of a huge work. Amount of work. Thank you.